Welcome back YouTube to this part of this advanced sky replacement in nuke series. In the last two parts we went over creating this really high resolution skybox in Photoshop and now we will begin mapping it onto a skybox model that we will bring into nuke for the camera projection. And so I'm going to be using Blender. Actually I'm going to exit this out. I'm going to be using Blender in this tutorial but you can really use anything that, uh, any 3D program that can do 3D mapping. But first off, I'm going to drop in a UV sphere. And now, before I forget, change cycles render to blender render, or else this won't work. And it'll look very weird. But go into your side view, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut the sphere in half. Now, if I forget something, please excuse me, because I've recorded this tutorial a bunch of times. Uh, this will be like my eighth time. Camtasia is messing up and I really hope it doesn't mess up this time. But anyways, you're gonna cut off the bottom half and then the top few. So you should be left with four up and then, yeah, that's it. And then go to the top and what you're gonna do is you're going to select these faces right here and you're just gonna clip those out. So X faces. And that looks pretty good. Now we have to UV map. So drag out this window up here and go to the UV image editor and go to image, open image and go to desktop, skybox, sky text. And this is a huge image, so if you're working on lower quality machines, this is really going to be a pain. Um, but luckily my computer's decently fast, so I can handle this. Or what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go into edit mode, and then select these back faces right here. Because if we were to just project this as is, and then go you project from view, uh, scale that up a little bit. You'd see it looks really weird. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. You'll see it's really stretched, and then this mirrors that, and we don't want that happening. So, right now, actually, I'm going to flip the direction of the normals, so that way it looks more like a skybox, and then I'm going to delete the lights so we can see it in full. But as you can see, it really doesn't look good. Um, this is what it would look like if we used a camera, an actual camera projection, just to project this onto a sphere. It'd look really bad, it'd look all stretched out and stuff like that. So we don't want that, that's why we're in Blender right now. Um, so instead what you're going to do is, you're going to select the back faces and hit U, project from view, or whoops, no, go into front view and then hit U, project from view. And then you, you're going to want to center this, scale it up. And it'll speed it up if this isn't in front view. And actually, if you hover over this and hit control up arrow, it'll maximize the viewport and that will speed everything up. Well, not speed everything up, but it'll uh, help a little bit. But if you look, this is all curved and we really don't want that. We want it to be flat. So what we're going to do is we are going to go line by line, click and then alt click to select an edge loop and hit SX0. This is just straightening out all the lines. Don't worry if they overlap, just select, uh, use this with the bottom points and they'll all sort out eventually. For this, I would recommend using this little edge select tool down here. It, it speeds it up a lot. All right, now that you have this, uh, scale this up a little bit. You want this to fit the original image as best as possible, just because we put a lot of work into it, so I don't want to waste it. But now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go from the outside in for a little bit and hit SX0. We want this mirrored. <clears throat> SX0, and then drag this, just these few out. It really doesn't matter where you drag them out, we're all gonna fix them later. 
But now what we're going to do is we're going to look at about this one right here. See how these are all square pretty much and then this starts to distort? We're trying to make these all square. So drag these out. Like that and then drag these out. <clears throat> Shouldn't be that complicated. Okay, now that that's done, if you hit control up arrow again, and then hit Alt-Z, you will see that this front part is really well. It's very um, nicely matched as far as lengths go. Um, everything's proportional, it's no, not stretched. You can have a little bit of stretching because uh, it's clouds, you know, that's not a defined circle or anything like that. But now we have these two halves right here that uh, we didn't project the first time. So just select these two from the top, go to front view, hit U, project from view, and then scale these up and fix these. Okay. Now the thing is, the way it is, this is we need to flip these. So select the left one and hit SX negative one. And then select this one, hit SX negative one. And now grab X5000. And we're gonna bring these to the edge. Or grab X negative 5000. <clears throat> and now when we go back and select everything, now we're gonna start connecting them. So this is gonna be very, I guess not really difficult, I'm not gonna say. Um, but they will be misproportional at first. Don't worry, we'll fix that. So you just want to shift click, weld. And I actually shift click. Uh, make sure you have vertice mode selected, or vertex mode. And I'll select that one, that one, weld. And then just do this for everything both sides. Don't worry about moving everything, because remember, you want to do this proportionally. Okay, now once you have those welded, uh, select it, hit SX0, SX0, and now do this with the rest of them. So go back into edge mode and hit Alt, right click, and just do this for all of them. Okay, now once you have all those scaled out, you'll see this is very non-proportional right now. So what you're going to do is you're going to select one line at a time and hit SY is zero. This is really just a tutorial on straightening things out, pretty much. Um, not really that technical. You really don't have to do this, but I like to because it just, I don't know, I guess it makes it look better just a little bit. Uh, but then do what you did before, where you're making, whoops, didn't want to do that. Where you're just making squares. And if you run into something like this, where this side is longer than this side, just grab X and make it a square. Okay, now when you're done, it should just look like a grid. It doesn't matter if things are a little off. You're really not gonna pay attention to it. But this is the finished skybox. Our camera will be in here looking around. Um, I guess if you wanted to, you could go a little further up. But um, yeah, just make it easier, like four up and then uh, however many around. It really helps. Uh, Cause odds are your camera's not gonna spin 360 degrees. Um, you don't really need that last little part in the back. <clears throat> if it does, uh, just make sure you angle it this way first, and then it'll go all the way around to almost 360. But you should be good. Anyways, um, last step you want to do is, first off, save this. Save as. Uh, I already have it saved from the 500 other times I tried to record this tutorial. And then 
Make sure only the skyboxes. Wait, is, oh yeah, never mind. Make sure the skybox is selected and only the skybox. Then you're gonna hit File, Export, FBX, and then make sure selected objects is checked, and then hit Export FBX. And that is it for this tutorial. The Monday after next, um, if Camtasia is working right, won't. Uh, I will put up another tutorial, probably the last part or second to last part, something like that. Um, basically, we'll just be bringing this into Nuke and setting up the camera tracking and all that stuff. So, see you then.